All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call the Tuesday, May 24th, 2022 Planning Board meeting to order, please. Karen, could you call the roll? Here. Um, I would just ask before the meeting begins to please silence your cell phones and note this meeting is being recorded. First on the agenda under public hearings is a continued public hearing proposed zoning amendment to amend sections 13 and 28 of the 1985 City of Woburn Zoning Ordinance to allow for off-site directional signage for and solar photovoltaic systems in the Technology and Business Mixed Use Overlay District. Good evening. Um, I'm Ann Reynolds here on behalf of the applicant, uh, Montvale Land LLC, and I am covering for my partner, Joe Tarby, who uh, made the initial presentation to you all. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, I also have here with me the applicant, uh, Brian Murray, in case there, um, there are any specific questions the board might have. Um, so just by way of sort of brief intro, and I'll be quick, um, I'm just going to sort of recap um, the presentation that Joe uh, made at the end of April. Um, as you know, he presented the <coughs> excuse me, proposed revisions to Section 13 and Section 28 of the Zoning Ordinance and the reasons for those revisions. There were discussion with the board members uh, relative to the proposed height and language on the, uh, on the off-site signage. There was general discussion on incorporating Section 26 solar photovoltaic installations into Section 28 with general support to adopt the language in 20, <coughs> excuse me, Section 26. And there was a concern expressed that the proposed amendment to Section 28.6.33 was too broad. After discussion with the board, the applicant proposed that the signage be limited to one off-premises sign, that the maximum height of the sign be reduced from 30 feet to 10 feet, that the sign be limited to the listing only of up to six of the development projects at the Vale, <coughs> and that the proposed <coughs> revision by the planning board director to section 28.6.3.3 be adopted. Um, we have reviewed the planning board director's proposed recommendation um, and we are in agreement with it. I'm happy to answer any additional questions the board might have in connection there with. All right, are there any board questions for the applicant? <coughs> All right, I, oh, I Jim, go right ahead. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have my packet from the previous one, but uh, this uh, zoning ordinance is particular to the Vale project, correct? Okay. Yes. Uh, I do see correspondence here that it may go beyond the limits or people are inquiring about it. Uh, I do. I don't have any uh, concerns with the signage the way it is presented right now, um, but for all signage, you have to have the sight lines when they come to street accesses. Uh, and that should be considered when we uh, contemplate these. But that's all I want to make sure that it was only for the veil. It is. Thank you. All right. Are there any other questions, either for the applicant or general comments? Tina. Yes, I just wanted to acknowledge um, the board did get a letter from Cummings Properties which I provided in the packet in the way of comments. <coughs> they had obviously no objection particularly to this proposal, but they actually suggested that if possible, uh, the city consider adding to this proposal uh, allowance for other properties that abut uh, a BI district to also have off-site signage. Just want to acknowledge a couple of things. One is to say thank you because it's very nice to see anybody engaged in the public process. Very often we're here on a zoning amendment and we don't have anybody in the audience or anybody that makes comments. So it's nice to hear occasionally from someone on the outside. I will say though that with respect to the suggestion that she made in the letter, um, in fact, we could not or the board could not contemplate 
expanding this proposal to incorporate other parcels. Um, uh, the legal notice that was published for this was very specific, and it was specific only to the T-Bod parcels. Um, and that is the only, the former craft site is the only uh, site in the city that is zoned T-Bod. So um, the suggestion is frankly one that the city could not uh, follow at this point. Perhaps sometime in the future, um, there's a, you know, a, a certainly any other property owner could ask for something similar. And I suppose it is conceivable that a planning board or a city council in Woburn might at some point take on the issue of off-site signage to benefit other businesses. But it's a, a bigger project, certainly, and a bigger analysis, and, and probably not at this point a priority, at least for the planning board, I'm guessing. Uh, there are a number of other things that we have talked about uh, wanting to tackle and um, several other things on the list, uh, certainly before that. So I just wanted to acknowledge that we had received that letter uh, and comment on it, so thank you. Excellent, all right. So um, are there any further comments or questions before I ask for the planning board director's recommendation? Mike. Uh, <coughs> Chair Tatina, uh, just on, on that letter from, from Cummings Property, uh, um, do they, do they, do, should we provide a, a, a public response or how, how are we gonna handle that? I can certainly follow up with her. I've had a conversation with her. She was actually in attendance at the first segment of the public hearing just listening. So I can certainly get in touch with her and, and thank her personally for the letter and, and convey the, the sentiment that I said earlier if it reflects the board's wishes. I mean, because, uh, you know, you, you travel through all, you see, you know, they, you see Cummings' new, um, um, they have a little piece of artwork that kind of denotes their the orange butterflies, yeah. I call them. I don't know what they are, but I, yes. Yeah, kind of like an art installation yeah. identifier of its own. Um, uh, all right, I just was just curious as to where, um, make sure we do respond to what they're, they're looking for. That was right. it, thank you. Okay, and in terms of the planning board director's stated uh, response, if there's any comments or suggestions on that, or if that reflects where the board is, we will, we will leave it there unless there's anybody who has more to say. All right, seeing no one who has more to say, I would ask for the planning board director's recommendation well, on this I would, particular uh, agenda item. So I would um, recommend that after we uh, finish the public hearing and close it, that we consider writing a letter, uh, a report to the city council that recommends with respect to the solar photovoltaic installations, that the amendments uh, be adopted, but revised in two ways uh, before then. In section 28.3 proposed, I replace the citation 266.119 with 286.119. And in section 28.63, I'm sorry, 28.6.3, replace the proposed phrase, quote, except as authorized by a special permit pursuant to 28.3, replace that with the phrase, quote, except for accessory uses that may be authorized by a special permit pursuant to section 28.3. That would give the council the authority uh, to allow other accessory uses that may not be explicitly permitted, but it would not give the council the authority to uh, approve other principal uses that may not be specifically listed in the ordinance. Um, and then we would, I would recommend that we attach a copy of uh, the proposal with the revision shown in place. With respect to the uh, allowing the offsite signage in a BI district for a TBA development, I would recommend that the planning board act favorably and recommend that those amendments be approved, but revised in four ways uh, before adoption. Number one, that the maximum height of an off-premise sign be reduced to 10 feet, that the number of allowed off-premises signs be limited to one, that the number of developments, projects, or businesses that can be included on such an off-premise sign be limited to six, and require that if the sign does have two faces, then each face of the sign must have the same text and design. And then fourthly and lastly, um, eliminate the authority to include a street address on the off-premise signage. That was part of the original proposal, but it's not something that they're planning to pursue, 
and so I would recommend that that be struck. And then, of course, a copy of that amendment with your proposed revisions in place be attached to that letter of recommendation. Okay, thank you. So the reminder that the public hearing is still open. Would there be a motion to close the public hearing? Motion to close the public hearing. Motion by Dave. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Jim. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please raise your hand. One, two, three. Six in favor, none opposed. The public hearing is closed. Would anybody wish to make a motion to move this matter? I'll make the motion to um, accept the planning director's recommendation to forward to the city council. All right. Motion by Mike. Is there a second? Second. Second by Carolyn. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask for a vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. We have six in favor, none opposed. That motion carries. Good luck with the council. All right, next on the agenda is a continued public hearing for a roadway improvement plan for Zero Village Street. Um, yes, Madam Chairman and members of the board, uh, we had continued the public hearing from the, uh, April to this meeting in the hopes that the public hearing would be restarted. Uh, unfortunately for the applicant, I guess you could say, in the interim, a question has been raised relative to whether or not this lot, which was created by virtue of a variance granted years ago, uh, the question has been raised as to whether or not that lot is actually still a valid building lot. So many years have intervened between the grant of the variance and now that there is a question. Three years ago, the building inspector believed, uh, when this was first proposed, uh, the building inspector then believed that the lot was in fact a grandfathered, or not a grandfather, but uh, a valid legal lot by variance. Uh, evidently, there has been at least one court case that has happened in the intervening years that has led the building inspector to talk to the city solicitor, who is in fact um, of the opinion that the variance has lapsed, if you will, and that the lot is no longer a separate legal lot. So. The petitioner applied for a building permit and was denied by the building inspector. He did that in order to open up the possibility that he can now appeal that denial to the Zoning Board of Appeals, which he has done. I don't know whether it will be heard, it won't be heard this month, but I would suspect in June. And if he's successful, he will refile the petition timely and will continue with the discussion. If he is not successful at the Zoning Board of Appeals, he would then be appealing that, I, I think, to land court. Um, but maybe it's the uh, Superior Court, but he would appeal it nonetheless and have to pursue it at the court level, and that would take some time. So uh, rather than ask for a lengthy extension of the public hearing and continuance, he thought best to suggest that he withdraw the petition now with your permission and that he will refile it when he gets, and if he gets a positive answer on the buildability of that lot. All right. So there appears to be an open public hearing currently. Correct. Um, it would probably make sense. I, I would call for public participation, but there is no one in the room, um, and there was no one in the room for the, the prior um, public hearing as well. Um, I guess in an abundance of caution, we would make a motion to close the public hearing. Yes. And then after that, we would make whatever motion was appropriate. So um, I would entertain a motion to that effect. Motion to close the public hearing. Motion by Dave. Is there a okay. second? Second by Jim. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'd call for a vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. Six in favor, none opposed. That public hearing is closed. So we have already heard the planning board director. Well, actually, we haven't. You've just explained. So, Tina, is there a recommendation? There is. I would recommend that you allow them to withdraw this petition without prejudice. So moved. Motion by Dave. Is there a second? Second. Second by Carolyn. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, I'd call for a vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. Six in favor, none opposed. That uh, request to withdraw without prejudice has been granted. Next on the agenda, under subdivisions, Legacy Lane, expiration of construction completion date. Uh, yes, Madam Chairman and members of the board. Um, the completion date uh, for this subdivision expired earlier this month. And there was actually hope that we may be able to wrap it up and take a vote 
um, to release all remaining bond monies at this meeting, but there unfortunately is still a little bit of hanging business. The good news is that progress, in fact, has been made. The tree belt easement plan um, was, in fact, recorded at the Registry of Deeds, and the number of documents associated with the Homeowners Association that we needed to revise to reflect the fact that the roadway will remain a private way. Those have not only been executed, but those two have been recorded at the Registry of Deeds, and all of that um, recordation has been confirmed by planning staff. What remains outstanding are, are two things. Um, the mylar of the, the as-built plan has been reviewed by engineering, but we did not actually have a mylar in our possession, which we want to have, and then we want to have an opportunity for engineering to verify that it is in fact identical to the plan they reviewed and approved. And we were not able to do that for this evening. The other piece of business is that there was work that needed to be done within the middle street right of way. They had dug some trenches and done some work and DPW and we had conditioned approval, the board had conditioned approval on um, a successful repair of any work in middle street. That work has been done. It's been inspected initially by DPW and found to be acceptable, but the DPW director wants to go down and observe it uh, and how it's operating during a rainstorm just to make sure that there's no puddling issues. So we're hopeful that, um, actually my recommendation to you is to simply we'll lay this matter on the table with your permission and hopefully be able to put it on the agenda for June 14th. <coughs> they did deliver a mylar plan to us today but it was not able to be reviewed by engineering. So I think that by your next meeting on June 14th, both of those items will be handled and I'm hopeful that we'll be able to recommend to you that you release the remaining bond monies. All right, so are you suggesting that a formal vote is not required to table the matter? I am. All right, so we will just see perhaps Russo Drive if um, appropriate on our next agenda. All right, next under under subdivisions, Allen R. Garish Way, expiration of construction completion date. Yes, so in this subdivision, there's only um, one item that remains outstanding, and that is that um, there was a, uh, the approved plan showed a new street light at the end of the cul-de-sac, and somehow that was missed during construction, but of course our crack engineering department noticed it when they brought in the as-built plan. So we've had a number of discussions with the developer, and you might recall that a couple of members at the end of last year went to the site and made a judgment that the existing street lighting on Pearl was insufficient to adequately light the road. So there was gonna to need to be additional lighting added. The suggestion was made and is being pursued to perhaps add a second light fixture to an existing street pole um, that is on um, Pearl Street that could be directed toward the subdivision and perhaps provide adequate lighting. The developer has been pursuing that um, since we talked about it. He has had a conversation with Eversource uh, and he is waiting for a call back. They know what he wants and they know where he would like it and he is waiting a call back from them. The good news is that he's also taking a, a, a separate track in uh, identifying if by some chance Eversource says they will not allow him to put a second fixture on that pole. He has already done research with the help of DPW to find um, a vendor for a street light and a fixture. So he's pursuing that avenue in case the answer from Eversource turns out to be less than positive. So he has recently filed today a request to extend his completion date to September 30th of 2022. Figuring if it's Eversource that does the work, he'll need at least probably till then to get them out. And if not, he'll need to order that light and get the thing installed himself. So he's asking for an extension of the completion date to September 30, 2022. And planning staff supports that recommend, uh, that request. Okay. It's as an appropriate four month length of time to get either or. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments? Dave. For the chair to Tina, I just realized I'm in a butter, so I'll just abstain. That would be good, that would probably be best. Okay, all righty. Any other questions or comments? Um, would anyone like to make a motion in light of the planning board director's uh, recommendation and report? 
I'll make a recommendation that we um, we grant the extension um, submitted by the planning director. And that is to September 30th, 2022? Yes. All right, motion by Mike. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jim. Is there any mm -hmm. further discussion? Seeing none, I'd ask for a roll call vote. I mean, a uh, 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 vote, please raise your hand if you vote in favor. One, two, three, four, five in favor and Abstain. one abstention. So that motion carries. So let's end on a high note. Yeah. Russo yeah. Drive, expiration of okay. construction completion date. I'm sorry, what? Russo stage. Yeah, she just said that. Yeah. Oh. So let's oh. end on a high oh. note. Let's end, let's, <laughs> let's end <laughs> on a positive <laughs> note. <laughs> so calling Russo Drive, expiration of construction completion date with all hopes that it is the last time. Yeah, and I and it is. So the best news of this evening is that we, in fact, are going to be able to close out uh, the, Russo, um, the Russo Drive subdivision. Uh, we have received written certification from the engineering firm of Dresser, Williams & Way that indicates that the subdivision was constructed in substantial conformance with the approved definitive subdivision plan. With receipt of that document, that was the last outstanding item they had previously submitted as built plans that were found to be acceptable. So um, going to recommend uh, that the board um, uh, vote to release the remaining funds that are in the tripartite agreement for this subdivision. And we can cross this one off our list. The current amount in the tripartite is $111,958.25, plus any accrued, I guess there is no accrued interest, one eleven nine fifty eight twenty five. All right. Um, if there's any further discussion or comments, seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Make the motion that we accept the planning director's recommendation to release the uh, charity of one eleven nine fifty eight in twenty five cents. Excellent, Mike. That is the motion. And is there a second? Second. Second by Carolyn. Any further discussion? Um, I am calling for a vote. If you are in favor, please raise your hand. Six in favor, none opposed. Russo. Estates. Done. Done. Cross Russo off Drive. The list. Done. Cross so how long, how long off the have list. we been following this? Well, I've been here since 2014. And it was approved before that. <sighs> June 2014. <laughs> yeah. That's what, nine years? <clears throat> I don't think it's the longest one, but it, it feels long. Feels long. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we ended on a high note, and at this point, we have a planning board director update. Can you top that? Sure, I certainly can. Just wanted to follow up and let the board members know. Uh, somebody had asked about the sidewalk uh, that was related to Carlson Way uh, on Wyman Street. There was a section that had been undone. And on a couple of previous staff reports a number of years ago, I had reported that as unfinished work of the developer. As it turned out, when I reviewed the plans closely, after someone raised the issue last month, I found that in fact the approved subdivision plan did not, ex did not require that he install a new concrete sidewalk all the way to the end of the existing one that was on Wyman. There was in fact a gap um, and it was subsequently filled with bituminous concrete because there was obviously an unfinished um, portion of sidewalk that a lot of people use to get to and from school. So just want to let folks know that that was not a developer obligation, but it in fact has been since completed. Uh, next meeting of the board is scheduled for June 14th. Uh, there will be a number of items on the agenda, in addition <coughs> to a couple of things on the subdivision that we continue this evening. There will also be a public hearing on a zoning amendment that would allow retail marijuana use as a special permit in the IP2 zoning district only. That happens to be the same district in which medical marijuana dispensaries are currently allowed by special permit by the council. There will also be a public hearing on a special permit slash site plan review application to build a new 134,000 roughly square foot building at 260 New Boston Street. And that building will have about 33,500 square feet of light manufacturing. So that's why the planning board will be the special permit granting authority for that project. And then lastly, we will have discussion of a construction completion date expiration for the Baker Way subdivision. Um, 
And just on that, did, had we previously discussed whether June 14th would be a virtual meeting or an in-person meeting? That was I my next remember. question. I don't think we've had that general discussion. All right, well, feel, uh, that is a discussion we will have now. Given the agenda items, what is the will of the board? Well, it's the last meeting for three months, right? No, you'll have one on the 28th. Okay. And then you may have one in the summer, which is the next item of business. I'm fine with a virtual. All right. Anybody have thoughts? I mean, we were we were hoping to have a virtual and a and an in-person sort of split to sort of meet all of our constituencies. So theoretically, then, if we were to have June 14th virtually, then we would have an in-person on the 28th. So. Um, Tina, with regard to which meeting in June makes sense um, in each format, do you have thoughts? Um, well, as much as I, I do, I do prefer the virtual, though we do have a couple of public hearings. Um, yeah. well, don't have like, a preference. She, she, it seems like we get more people at the virtual meetings. I agree. Is that, is and that, I think it's, it's, all, it, it's really true. And as we go on into the summer, you know, this will continue to be an issue. So why don't we schedule June 14th for virtual and, and see, you know, if that is continuing to be our experience and Good. then we will decide what to do, you know, from there. Perfect. All right. So that will be a virtual meeting on June 14th. And then the only other item of business I had in my update was to talk to the board about potentially scheduling a meeting during the summer. We will have the two board meetings in June on the 14th and the 28th. And then at the moment, the next formally scheduled meeting is September 13th. However, I do know that there will be a zoning map and text amendment that will be submitted to the council and therefore the planning board, probably the middle of next month, that will um, uh, be a substantially different proposal, but a proposal for a life sciences and business overlay district for the property that's next to the showcase cinema. So that will be coming back in in mid-June. I'm told that it's very different than the first one that was submitted. Um, and so I'm going to recommend to the board that the members consider scheduling a meeting either for Tuesday, July 26th, or perhaps Tuesday, August 2nd. And we would schedule the public hearing for the planning board on that amendment for whatever date you choose. All right. So given those two dates as a possibility, um, does anybody have a preference between them july so july was it 26 26 would be your preference dave how do how does everyone else feel about that yeah. and now the question becomes virtual or in person virtual. why don't we go for virtual given it's summer vacation for a lot of people and one would hope even if the date ends up to be less than convenient, members would be able to join and the public would be able to join virtually. All right, so that meeting will be July 26th and that will be virtual. Good. So do I have to be in, in Woburn to be virtual? No, you can. Uh -huh. That's, that's no. the beauty of virtual. No, that's the beauty um, of virtual. And so in the summer, when we've often had difficulty getting together on a date in the summer. Hopefully the, the Zoom situation will make it a little bit easier. Do you remember how difficult it was when you were calling from California? Yeah, I do because there was really no, there was no um, format for that. Yeah, yeah. But, but we did it. We did it. Yeah, absolutely, we did it. We did it um, in service to our community. <laughs> all right. And that's all I have under the director's report. All right, so next we go to approval of minutes of the April 26th, 2022 virtual meeting. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes and are there any comments or um, corrections? <coughs> Hearing no comments and corrections, I would ask for a motion. Motion to accept. A motion to accept the minutes of April 26th, 2022 as submitted by Dave. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mike, any further discussion? Hearing none, I'd ask for a vote. All in favor, please raise your hand. That is six in favor, none opposed. Those minutes are approved. Is there any other business matters that may legally come before the board not known at the time of posting, Tina? No. All right, 
That being the case, I would ask for a motion. I make a motion we adjourn with the thought in our mind that the next time we're together, we will have a Celtics championship to win. <laughs> well, that's a good motion. Yeah. That's a good motion by Dave. <coughs> Is there a second? Second. Second by Mike. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, please raise your hand. Six in favor, none opposed. Thank you very much. We will see each other again in. Does the vote guarantee the champion?